Next, we will learn about the uh, benefits of removing hardness uh, from a water supply as uh, Joe Harrison, Technical Director of the Water Quality Association, explains the benefits to us. WQA is a nonprofit association representing 2,500 corporations that provide equipment and services in the water supply uh, treatment industry. Joe works with WQA's Gold Seal program, which provides third party laboratory testing and ANSI accredited uh, certifications of water products. Uh, earlier in his career, Joe was uh, chief of the safe drinking water branch for Region 5 of the U.S. EPA. Uh, Joe, please uh, come to the podium. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and lest I forget, I want to also thank uh, Dave Viola and Russ Cheney and members of the IAPMO Green Technical Committee for for getting me involved in this Emerging Technology Symposium and also for getting WQA involved in the, uh, in the development and the maintenance of the uh, green supplement code for IAPMO. We really appreciate that and I want to thank, thank all those people, particularly Dave Viola. He's the first one that got us, got us tuned into this. Uh, but I want to... Uh, oops. Figure this out. I want to, to tell you today about, uh, about water softeners and energy savings. And most people you ask about water softeners and they'll say two things to you. One, they soften water, and two, they discharge salt. <laughs> and, uh, but we've known for a long time that water softeners are a principal energy savers. I mean, we did, uh, not we, but New Mexico State University did a study in uh, the 1980s early 1980s, and they showed 20 to 30 percent savings in household water heater energy when the water is softened versus hard. Uh, and the Gas Research Institute about that time did the same type of thing, um, and uh, we wanted to update that. So we have with, the, our, with our association, the Water Quality Association, associated with us the same way that the American Water Works Association Research Foundation is associated with AWWA. We have a Water Quality Research Foundation that gets bequests 501c3 group that financed this study in 2009, about a half a million dollars worth of study. Um, a little bit, I, people have been asking me about the Water Quality Association and what we do. As Bob said, we have 2,500 members. These members are all companies, and they're all companies that belong to our association. The WQA is a trade association uh, involved in water supply treatment. Uh, different than utility water supply treatment, the water supply treatment we do is at private pre premises, on site, inside buildings, na namely. It could be inside a home, it could be inside a hospital, inside a car wash, uh, inside a laboratory. But anytime there's on-site treatment uh, on the private premise, it's usually one of our 2,500 members of WQA that do it. And, uh, and water softening, ion exchange, water softening, as well as what Peter Cartwright talked about yesterday, reverse osmosis, principal technologies that, that we do use. So the Water Quality Research Foundation did uh, finance the study. Uh, we used uh, Battelle Memorial uh, 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 Battelle Institute, Memorial Institute, to do the study out of Columbus, Ohio, and uh, they did this in most of 2009. Uh, that's a copy of the, the front page of the report, and there is how you can get a copy of the report. It's online, free, freely available. We put the whole 265 pages online, uh, www.wqa.org backslash Patel report. So I'll show that again at the end uh, for people that want it. And the idea is to show, demonstrate data that, uh, that, uh, that brings out the energy savings benefits of softening water. This, uh, this slide is from the uh, uh, Department of Energy and uh, I think it definitely is true that uh, water heaters are the second highest energy consuming area of a home. Uh, this slide shows 13%. I mean, the, big, the biggest heating area, energy consuming area of the home is heating the home. 
but as, uh, as Gary Klein said yesterday, that 13% may be low. I mean, I think that if you looked at the Department of Energy figures now, you'd probably say average water heating consumes about 25% of the energy that a home uses. If you're in the south, where, where, where heating the home isn't so much, it could be up to 50% of the energy in a home used for heating water. So if we can save some of that, if it's true, like New Mexico State University said, that we can save 20% of that, 20% of the second major, major chunk, we've become an energy saver bigger than many other things that are getting Energy Star and getting all the credit for saving energy. And I say we water softeners become the, a major energy saver. So this, uh, we, we looked at gas-fired storage tank water heaters, electric storage water heaters, and we looked at, at what we call the tankless, or some people say instantaneous water heaters. And uh, we looked at the maintenance and repair differences between operation on hard versus softened water. And we looked at the long, longevity also. We threw in appliances and, and fixtures. Since we have a supply of hard versus soft water, we threw in shower heads, faucets, clothes washers, dishwashers. And we analyzed the calculated a carbon footprint of uh, using softened water versus hard water for, for these things. So that, that all is in the report. Uh, the study was actually conducted at Patel for nine months, but it was on an accelerated rate. We used, uh, we used hard water, 26 grain hard water. Uh, we had a little iron in the water. Uh, we, we, we ran on-off on cycles 24 hours a day to, uh, to accelerate uh, what it typically would be in a house for a number of years. And we took th weekly uh, thermal efficiency uh, calculations uh, water temperatures and flows, gas usages, calculated BTU contents and variations in the incoming gas supply, and we had watt hour measurements of electricity uh, continuously through the report, Patel did. Very, very good bunch of engineers at Patel, as many of you probably know. Uh, focused on energy efficiency of uh, household water heaters, uh, using soft uh, uh, versus hard water, and also fixtures, 90-day study, as I say. Um, And we looked at, at the, uh, we also calculated a carbon footprint. And we got into this because uh, in 2006, the United Kingdom adopted a national code um, to help meet their uh, Kyoto uh, Treaty requirements of reducing carbon dioxide emissions that if you're, if you're using water going into a boiler or going into a water heater operation, the, the United Kingdom, the UK code says you must treat the water to remove the scale to save on carbon dioxide emissions. There was iron present in the water. I'll show you some slides and you'll see some things that are uh, some red. There was a little iron in the water. Mostly though it was hardness. Uh, it was 26 grain per gallon uh, water. Uh, I, I, I lose track of the, of the calculation would be, but there's 17.1 milligrams per liter in a grain, so if you multiply 17.1, that would be the milligrams per liter of hardness. And uh, there was a, a, about a part per million of iron uh, in, in, in the water, which iron typically is associated somewhat with hardness. When we softened the water, we got down to less than one grain per gallon and uh, less than three-tenths of a part per million of iron. And we analyzed the scale throughout the study as to see just what it was, calcium carbonate, magnesium, iron, other species, and we found out that it was mostly calcium uh, uh, carbonate, uh, some magnesium, and then uh, the iron 164, and some copper, or some, uh, some copper and some manganese. 